Can you guys? No. Oh, how's anybody supposed to film with this cuteness back here? Hey guys, what's going on? If you're new here, welcome. My name is Brittany Nicole, and as always, we are in natural light today because I'm gonna be showing you a full face of Charlotte Tilbury makeup. Now, you've probably seen a couple of these products sprinkled here and there for the last month and a half in my videos because I have been testing these products out for, yes, a month and a half. I think it's super important to get familiar with the products when you're gonna come on here and do a full face of something and kind of give your recommendations. Now, with that said, what works for me might not work for you what works for you might not work for me we all have different faces we all have different skin types so keep that in mind as I talk but I did want to make sure I got to know the products before I was gonna talk about them there's a couple things that I didn't love at first that I've come to kind of realize how I can make it work and now I love so keep that in mind when you buy makeup as well when you test something out yes sometimes we're gonna be like no way I'm not gonna touch that again but try it again in a week a week after that, you might figure out different ways to use products. So I'm super excited for this video because I love Charlotte Tilbury. I go to her page all the time when I want inspiration for makeup. I love how she does kind of a glamorous but still natural look. That's definitely the type of makeup I go for. And like I said, I go to her page a lot when I want inspo. And I love testing brands that have makeup artists behind them because, you know, they're playing with these products. They're used to it. This is their day in and day out. So I had really high hopes for the brand because I love Charlotte's and again you know when you're using one brand of makeup things should work well together so yeah I'm really excited to show you all of these products so if that sounds like something you're interested in go ahead and keep watching so the first product I picked up is the Hollywood flawless filter I picked up the shade number two and this has been worth every penny I know exactly why this is a cult favorite now it gives you the most beautiful glow from within you could use it as a primer you could use it as a highlight you could mix it in with your foundation which is what I like to do but I also like to use this on non makeup days it does have a little bit of a tint to it which is why you have to pick your shade but number two works really well for me I've heard people can go from like two there's a two and a half now they actually sell mini bottles but they were sold out of number two but that's fine because I absolutely love this and like I said I've been using it non-stop and then I think if you're like my skin tone ish you can probably use number three as well but two works really well for me and I've just been absolutely loving it so super happy I picked this up and the way I'm going to use it today is by mixing it in with the airbrush flawless foundation in the shade number four this is a very very full coverage foundation too full coverage for me to use on its own so I'm going to mix these two together you could also mix this in with your moisturizer and it looks really pretty like that as well this is the type of foundation I will wear for a fancy event. So like a wedding or something where there's gonna be photography. It's very, very lightweight on the skin and just evens everything out and makes it look flawless. Hence the name, Airbrush Flawless Foundation. But you can get really carried away with this if you go in with too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix them together and then apply it to the face with a brush. So I'll do like that and then maybe another one. I added two more because it wasn't enough and I can't really see what I'm doing in the camera. And then I'm gonna do like half a pump of the foundation and then I'll mix it together. That is definitely gonna be more than enough for my face. And I have a little bit on the brush as well. So I'm just gonna kinda take what's on the brush and place this where I need coverage. And I always like to spray my foundation brush before I go in. I just did that when I started doing makeup. I don't know if I saw somebody do that or what, but I just feel like it gives your brush a little more of a slip and I'm just gonna blend. So that's the foundation blended out. It is super lightweight. It looks stunning and undetectable on the skin. You could see how the Hollywood Flawless Filter just gives it a nice glow as well. If I didn't mix that in, this would be very matte on my face. I do have to say I like this better than the Milani Soft Focus Glow. I think it's a lot more versatile in the sense you can mix it in with your foundation. The Milani is a little too thick for that. I've never done it. Let me know if you've done that. I just wouldn't think to do it. I only think of the Milani as a primer, whereas this, you can mix it in your foundation, you can use it as a primer, or you can even, you know, put it on the tops of your cheekbones after you're done to kind of add highlights. So this has been absolutely invaluable. And like I said, this is gonna be my special occasion foundation because it looks really nice and it holds up all day long. Really enjoying this as well. So two big thumbs up to both of those products. All right, so next up, this one unfortunately didn't work well for me. This is the Magic Away Concealer. 
it's just very messy. Watch when I take this cap off. I'm just not a big fan of these sponge tip applicators either. You guys know how I feel about the Maybelline Age Rewind. I've been using that in the last couple of videos. So I don't feel like this goes on full coverage either. I feel it's supposed to be full coverage, but I feel like it's more of like a medium coverage. So I need to go in with a little bit more. I do, however, like this on the face. Like if I had to cover a spot, the foundation really covered this guy up. So I don't really need to add much there. If I needed to add a little coverage to my chin, I don't usually go in with this much concealer, especially with a full coverage foundation, but I just kind of want to show you guys. There's nowhere else I really need to add it to. I might add a little bit more here. But I don't know, it's just really messy and I feel like I like my e.l.f. Not I feel like, I know I like my e.l.f. concealer, which is like $5 and this is like close to $30. I like the e.l.f. a lot more, so I'll continue with that. Maybe because of the e.l.f. formula, it's a little more liquidy and this is really thick. But the best way to blend this out, in my opinion, and I think because it's more of a thick product, like I would do this with the NARS Potted Concealer as well fingers. I just think it really kind of blends it into the skin the best. And if you go in with a brush or a sponge with this one, I just feel like it picks up too much coverage and it just doesn't melt it into the skin like the fingies do. So concealer is blended out. I'm actually going to grab my, I always butcher this name, Airbrush Flawless Finish Skin Perfecting Micro Powder in shade number one on my damp beauty blender with just a little bit of product. And I'm going to actually set that because I feel like I need it. I do want to blend it out once again right before I do that. And then I'll hold my compact up. I cannot set typically under my eyes. And if I do, it needs to be a really fine powder like this. Otherwise, it transfers into my contacts. Let me know if you guys get that. So I'm going to kind of keep it down here. And I'm only adding a little bit. But I feel like this concealer needs it. So I'm not baking. I'm, I'm not baking at all. I'm just trying to set. This powder is really beautiful. It's blurring. It's not heavy. And it doesn't totally like take down your shine. It's just a really, really good powder. I've had that for a long time. That's actually the only Charlotte Tilbury product I've had, but I really enjoy that. So next up, we're gonna go in with the Film Star Bronze and Glow. And you guys, I did not want to love this when I purchased it. I was like, all right, come on, a contour and a highlight powder. Every brand has that. You can get a cheap one at the drugstore. This is really pretty. It blends all of her powders, every single one, blend really, really easy and they look undetectable on the skin and that's what makes it for me a really, really nice brand. This color, I, I have the shade light. There's a light and I think there's either a medium or a dark version of this. This is just the perfect contour shade for me and this one actually came with a little brush of hers. It's like a mini version so I'm actually going to use that. I don't typically contour so again, I'm not going to use this every day but for special occasions, this will definitely be it. And when I contour I do small little circles and I'm directing upwards you don't want to pull your face down with contour obviously <laughs> we'll come back to the highlight in a second but I want to bronze first this is the airbrush bronzer in the shade number two which again works really well if you're close to my skin tone this is the entire reason I placed this order. I've had this on my wish list since it came out, I think last year, and it is everything I wanted it to be. First of all, huge. It's basically as big as my face. It will last forever. They also sell refills, so you don't have to purchase a whole new compact, which is awesome. Who wants to throw this beautiful thing away anyway? This is like very Little Mermaid vibes to me, but like I was saying, it's everything I wanted it to be. It's beautiful. It blends super easy, just like any of her bronzing products. They're just really nice. It doesn't go on too much at once. That's one thing with the drugstore that I've noticed. Some of their products are so pigmented, especially like the Wet n Wild brands and stuff like that, that if you go in with too much at once, you have to really work to blend it out later. Not with these products at all. It's very hard to go in with too much and then they blend really easy. I really like this. If I still did makeup, this in every shade would definitely be in my kit. So would the Hollywood Flawless Filter and a couple other products we'll talk about. Next up, I'm gonna grab the Cheek to Chic 
blush in Pillow Talk. I picked up every shade of Pillow Talk I possibly could because I feel like that's what everybody uses. So I'm gonna grab this Japanesque brush. I need to get a better blush brush. For some reason, I'm not loving this lately. I feel like it's taking up too much space. Let me know your favorite blush brush down below. I'm definitely in the market. So anyway, everybody does this like swirl pop thing to kind of get the highlight. So I'm following that. I'm gonna go ahead and add this. Again, it blends super nice. The color is perfect. It doesn't go in with too much at a time. I would have multiples of these in my collection as well. Blush, a good formula of blush that's not too matte, not too sheeny, and blends really well and doesn't go on patchy is actually kind of hard to find. The only other one I've really found that's like that is the Milani, but this I like how it has the little pop of shimmer in the middle. See, typically I always go in with my sponge after I go in with my bronzer or my blush and I really don't even need to with this because they blend and just kind of sit perfectly on the skin when you apply, so. Yeah, I'm just, I'm really impressed, guys. All right, so popping back into the Filmstar Bronze and Glow palette, I'm gonna grab the highlight on an Anastasia brush, and I'm gonna go ahead and add that to the cheeks, and originally I was like, oh, this highlight is not gonna be enough. It is enough. It is perfect. Again, it doesn't have, like, shimmer in it, where it looks like, okay, girl, you got, I mean, it does look like you have highlight on, but it also looks really natural at the same time and it just blends out real easy. If you have texture, any highlight is gonna highlight your texture. I don't know anybody who has found a highlight that doesn't highlight texture. It's a, it's a highlight, so it's gonna highlight texture, you know what I mean? So I would just recommend if you had texture, I wouldn't use a highlight. I'm gonna pop that in the inner corner too. So you guys know after I do my base, I go in and set. So this is the Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. I picked up the smaller version. This smells like luxury when you spray it, so I really like it, but I don't think it really prolongs the look of my makeup, but it does take down the appearance of any kind of powders, which is typically why I go in with a setting spray. The only setting spray that actually makes it last longer, in my humble opinion, is the Scandinavia Bridal Setting Spray, but I really like the smell of this a lot, and the mister is chef's kiss perfect. I wish you guys could smell it. It really, really smells like you're walking into like a luxurious spa in a really fancy hotel. You know what I just noticed about this? This spray really gets your whole face. You really don't have to go in with that much. I recommend just doing an X and a T in the first place. We get carried away on YouTube and start spraying like crazy, but one spray really kind of disperses all over your face, which is actually really, really nice. I cannot stand a setting spray, refresher spray that just like spits at you in one direction. It makes it really difficult because then you have to spray all over, so that's awesome. And I have foundation all over my lips that I just realized, so. Pardon me. I had to let my camera sit for a second. The internal temperature was too hot, which is crazy because it's like five degrees outside and I'm right next to a window, but okay. <laughs> so I filled in my brows a little bit because I didn't get a brow pencil, but I did pick up the legendary brows. I just want to show you guys really quickly how perfect the spoolie is. This is the most ideal, in my opinion, spoolie ever. Now, I don't remember picking up the shade Deep Brown, I think that's what this is. I'm pretty sure I picked up the shade Deep Brown, but I don't know why I did that because this is a little bit dark for me. So I have to be very, very careful because this is pigmented. Not quite like the Anastasia Dip Brow Gel. I think that's what it's called, but this will pick up every single tiny little hair. So if your brows aren't done, be very careful because it'll pick up the little guys on the bottom. But what I really like about this is that it tints it actually holds your brows in place as well. The spoolie, like I said, is perfect. And once you let it sit and go in with just a clean spoolie and brush it, it makes them look even more full. It's, I don't know if you're supposed to do that. And if that's a thing, I looked online to see if it said like, let it sit and then brush them up. It doesn't. But when you do that, it makes them look extra soft and just really, really full. So I've been really enjoying this. I just wish I had picked up a lighter color because I have to be, like I said, 
very very careful i mean see how nice and full i think they call it like model brow or something versus the one that doesn't it really really does a little bit of something more than a little bit of something it does a lot of bit of something <laughs> it cleans up really easily too which is nice again with the anastasia dip brow gel it's kind of hard to clean up with that this you can easily just kind of like touch your skin and pick up anything you don't want all right, so we're gonna let the brows hang out for a little bit. I did pop a little bit of the bronzer in my crease because we're gonna go in with this palette right here, which is the Hollywood Flawless Eye Filter Palette in Star Aura. Watch Wayne Goss's video on these palettes. These are her new like eye filtering palettes and he makes some really good points about the marketing behind it because this is a really, really pretty palette. It's kind of a sheer wash of eyeshadow, which I really like. Yes, I'm starting to get really watery out here because I started touching my eyes, but I like that it goes on kind of sheer and you can build them up. I actually just use this on my cousin for her engagement photos and she really liked it as well. So I'm gonna go in with this palette. I'm not doing a full on tutorial, but I'm I'm just gonna pop these two in like the center and on the lid and then I'll deepen the outer corner with the two bottom brown shades. The joy of shadows that go on really sheer is they blend really easy so you don't have to do too much work when it comes to blending. I can't tell you how easy that blends. I mean, I'm barely touching my eyes because again, the watering situation and ugh, it's just so stinking pretty. I love it. So I'm just gonna repeat the same thing on the bottom lid. So I'm gonna start with the two brown shades, work that on like the outer, nah, maybe all the way into like three fourths of the way and then add a little bit of the lighter shades on the inner corner. Real simple. It's probably gonna go on real pigmented because it's mixing with my tears. <laughs> Eyes are done, only watering a little bit right here. You guys can see how it's going on. That's not the eyeshadow at all. Really, really like the shadow. It's just my very watery eyes. So I'm gonna get in there with liner really quick. This is her new Hollywood Exagger Eyes Liner Duo. So there's a black side and a metallic champagne side, which is right up my alley. So I'm just gonna line the upper water line with the black, which goes on really, really pigmented. And then I'll take the champagne on the lower water line. If you're like me and you really like a nude and a black liner, I think you'll really like that. I I love the idea of having them both on one more brand should do that and it really doesn't transfer bad at all so the black doesn't transfer onto the nude like hardly at all which is really good so next up before this eye completely gets messed up from the watering i'm gonna go in with the new pillow talk push up mascara you know i'm a big fan of tubing mascaras like the snapscara and then the thrive cosmetics and the new merit tubing mascara i love all those but with that said i do like the brush of this a lot and the formula is nice it's not too wet when you first open it that for me is like the worst because i end up getting mascara everywhere so it is really nice it is really black as well and it's lengthening and volumizing so it is good if you like non-tubing mascaras i'm just so into tubing mascaras i can't stop using them see how nice that is it's really black it's lengthening it's separating i'm just too into tubing mascaras and how easy they come off so i'm hooked but for a standard mascara i think that's really really nice so i'm really quickly just gonna brush up the brows remember how i was talking about when you do that after this sits for a while they get even more fluffy and just like very like model like boy brow oh see see that oh i can't it's just so cool i love it i love that product i haven't seen a brow product do that at all so uh by the way i didn't apply too much mascara on the lower because the watering situation so let's get in and do these lips you know i picked up the pillow talk lip liner so i'm going to start with that Now I do like that liner, but it's so much more expensive than like the LA Girl lip liners that I use, the wooden liners that I don't know if I'd purchase it again. Very, very creamy formula. So if you like that, you'll really enjoy that. Very different from the LA Girl. LA Girl is very much like the MAC lip liners. They're wooden and a little more stiff. This is very creamy. So more room for error if you accidentally move your hand, 
which is why I typically like the wooden lip liners, but you know, to each their own, I do really like the color and the formula is nice. So next up, I'm gonna go in with her new, I think this is called Hyaluronic Lip Kiss. It's in Pillow Talk. I wanted to get this because I do prefer more of a hydrating lip product versus a matte lip product. I don't love the packaging of this. I wish this was in like a lipstick bullet tube rather than this because it's very hard to get on, but I think it's not supposed to be like perfectly applied, you know what I mean? I assume it's more kind of like a lip balmy thing, but it is very pigmented, so be careful. See what I mean by it's very pigmented? It is very pigmented. So I'm just gonna go ahead and top that off with the Pillow Talk, I believe this is called Lip Jewel. I'll put something on the screen if it's not, it's really hard. I'm 32, okay, my eyes aren't that bad and it's really, really hard to read the tiny writing on the bottom of that. So I'm gonna top everything off with this. Not really necessary with the Hyaluronic Lip Kiss, but you know. I wanted to do a full face. All right, you guys, so that is it for my full face of Charlotte Tilbury. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. I've really, really been enjoying these products a lot. You could tell there's a makeup artist behind the brand, and I really don't think they're unfairly priced for how they perform. There's some brands out there like Chanel and Gucci and all that that sell makeup where you're like, whoa whoa, that is way too expensive and some of them don't perform that well. I really do think these perform well and like I said, you could tell there's thought and a makeup artist is behind the brand. So let me know if you wanna see more videos like this, if you wanna see more one brand videos, if you wanna see more high-end makeup videos. Typically drugstore makeup does the best on my channel so it tells me that you guys like it. I like drugstore makeup a lot as well and it's very easy to get to but I am totally open to doing more like this. So let me know down below. Otherwise, if you're interested in seeing any more videos from me please subscribe it means the absolute world to me if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up it helps me a lot share it with your friends and i hope to see you in the next one thanks again for watching bye bye